the word of God revealed. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. St. John 16, 13. of physical as well as mental and spiritual distress in this country and abroad, there was a seeking for divine reality. The philosophies of men were inadequate to cope with humanity's problems. Man had reached his extremity. The people and the world were at a place where nothing short of God could help and lift them. Then came the electrifying word, God is here. And in our day and in our time, they found him teaching and preaching in the little fishing village of Fayville, Long Island, New York. At his home in Fayville, believers drawn from all walks of life and racial abstractions gathered around the abundant banquet table to fellowship with the living Christ. Never had such words of wisdom and power from the infinite one fallen on the ears of humanity. The words flowed from his lips in a never-ending stream. Words of life and spirit and love. They were so numerous 
that the small staff who had voluntarily set about to transcribe them could not keep up with their transcriptions, nor could the press publish them all, and many of these wonderful words have been buried until this very day. Now a larger staff is busy getting them out to the press so the world can benefit. The following are jottings from the early notebook of one transcriber recorded for the enjoyment and enlightenment of some and as foundation stones toward a perfect world for others. I thank you, Father. Father Divine's words from the notebook of John Lamb. Installment number 31. The mortal version is the gravitation of the earth. And when you lose your mortal version, the gravitation of the earth loses its power over you. It is wonderful. It is all in the state of mind, don't you see? And through the mind transcending the mortal concept of all things, at that particular juncture, it causes the whole body to be translated into the expression of the immortal mind. Speaking of a student previously referred to in these notes, who ascended above the housetops while preaching and then came down again. And if you live in that, dear ones, then the whole body will be incorruptible, undefiled, and will not fade away. So when that body lost the entire mortal conception of all things, then the whole body was lighted with the light of truth and the power of the Almighty. All mortality was put off, and it was not subject to the mortal, and it had no seed of corruption in it then. And the body was incorruptible at the time that it put off mortal and put on immortality. At that particular time, it was impossible for any contagious disease to be contracted. We went in all kinds. We went into smallpox houses. We went into houses that were contagious with smallpox. And we went in there, and the spirit of the presence of God healed them. It was a matter of impossibility for any infirmities to be expressed in the bodies at that time. For that one had put off all mortal versions, and it walked in the newness of life. That is your highest calling, to bring forth the Christ to fruition in your lives and manifest him to the world. I like to think about those things and to glory in them. As to the future, so it will be with someone. If you will not live in conformity to these truths, Someone else will, and it will be reproduced in the fullness of expression. It is the same today, yesterday, and forever, and all have a right to this tree, for it is life and truth. Christ, as it reads, is your prophet, your priest, and your king. There is truth he came to be termed in the human mind and in the human version as a prophet and as a priest and as a king. For if Christ is all and in all, then the testimonies of the truth from the different individuals, you can leave it be even as it is said, so long as it is not against us. That is why Christ the great love master in the person of Jesus said, when they said they saw some casting out DVLs in his name, but they went not with us in our views, it may be termed, and they said, we forbade them. He said, forbid them not, 
For he that is not against us is for us. There are many times and many views that men may speak concerning Christ from their standpoint of view, so long as they are not trying to refute the truth or condemn the truth and reflect on that which the truth is doing for the general public, it may be their views and be not against us, but before us. To some, Christ is a prophet. To some, Christ is a priest. To some, Christ is a minister. And to some, Christ may be a rabbi. Did not the Jews say, Rabbi? because they were accustomed to the rabbis in those days speaking concerning the Christ. Although there was no record given that Jesus had been ordained a rabbi, but because he was filling the office of a rabbi to those that were under that belief and under that teaching, they could see that he was doing that which the rabbis were supposed to do, and therefore they said, Rabbi. Some may call me Reverend. Some may say Doctor. Some may say Elder. Some may say Brother Divine. Some may say the Prophet. Some may say the King. And some may say one thing, and some may say another. But it is in the world of language in which they are speaking. It is wonderful. And they may mean the same thing, so long as they are not actually trying to refute or condemn. If they are not against us, they are for us. So I say that to you that will have or would have heretofore condemned some expressions of men as they would say, Reverend, Mr., Doctor, Elder Divine, Brother Divine, etc., or any of those names or expressions that you may not see or believe in yourselves, they are speaking from their standpoint, and as long as they are not speaking in condemnation in any way, or trying to refute the truth in any way, if they are in harmony to the best of their understanding, we do not have to refute their testimony or bring condemnation on them. As I often say, I introduce myself as a man. I reveal myself as I am. Only to those that are under the revelations can they be really convinced and brought to the conscious realization of who I am. But by introduction, I am as to them that are not under revelation and in the revelations or inspirations as a man. With or without a body, I shall eternally reign. But I am manifesting myself in a body this time. I came to save you. And if you walk worthy of the vocation wherein you are called, you will come without fault before the throne of grace. It is wonderful. If you will not be defiled with women, if you be redeemed from among men, and if you will keep my saying, you will never see death. And as I am, so will you be. You will have victory over the DVL, the flesh, and the world, death, the other place, and the grave. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now aren't you glad? I haven't done anything yet to what I'm going to do. I have power over all flesh, and I will bring them unto me. I will bring them from far and near. As I said the other day, Webster said years back that the soul was the spirit. The Spirit and the Word of God does not say so, for the Spirit and the Word of God separates the soul from the Spirit and is a discerner and can see the difference between the soul and the Spirit, wherein the human intellect and the human intelligence cannot. 
He saw it as a spirit. He did not have the mental or spiritual magnifying glass to see that the soul is not the spirit and to separate the soul from the spirit. It was too fine to be seen by the mental eye, and therefore they that had not the spiritual magnifying glass to bring them clear so that they could see that the soul and the spirit are two and not one, they would go off with that impression that the soul is the spirit. And when you speak on the soul, or concerning the soul, or concerning the spirit, the mortal human intellect believes and still believes that the soul is the spirit of which you speak. It is wonderful. But one writer said it was a discerner. The word of God was a discerner. It was sufficient to separate the soul from the spirit and get between the joints and the marrow. The soul, as I said, from the mortal human intellect is the spirit. From a mortal standpoint of view, the human intellect teaches that the soul is the spirit. There is a psychological teaching that bears out the soul to be the mind. Then there is an expression that bears out that the spirit and the mind, they are one. That is what some say. But however, according to the scripture, God formed man out of the dust of the ground and as though man was dead. He breathed in Adam, the man, the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. Hence, it must have been a dead soul, for the soul that sinneth, it shall die, and therefore the soul that sinneth not shall live. Eight souls were saved by water. It reads as though those boys were in the ark in body. It shows that the soul that sinneth shall die, but the spirit goes back to the God that gave it. That is evidence that the soul is not the spirit, or else why, says the Lord. The spirit goes back to the Lord that gave it. So it is wonderful to know the truth that maketh free, free from all superstition, from ignorance and from misunderstanding. And through that, it giveth you victory over limitations, lacks and wants and conditions that are being expressed in the mortal world. It is wonderful. These wonderful truths are beautiful, aren't they? Believest thou not that which thou seest not? Blessed is he that believeth and yet hath not seen. That is the place to be, and that is the true calling, to believe and yet see not. For faith is the substance of the thing hoped for, the evidence of the thing not seen. Out of the smallness of the little spider you see his web. He continues to extend. So truly it is a mystery, for faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It caused my mind to go back to the song we have just sung. This is a sketch of a reflection of a percent of a percent of a percent of a condition of the mind within. It is the outpicturing of a sketch of a reflection of a percent of a percent of a percent of the limitless blessings I have in storehouse for the souls of the children of men. So then, it is extending all the time. The spider will get so much web out of his foot or someplace, and his foot, you know, you can take that web and roll it up in a ball, and it is bigger than he is. And where did it come from? It looks as though it came from his foot. Tear it down, and he will build another one. So it is true as a sketch and the reflection of a percent of a percent of a percent of the condition of the mind within. It is the outpicturing of a sketch of a percent of a percent of a percent of the limitless blessings that I have in storehouse for the souls of the children of men. So it is wonderful to see how you draw these things out of something that is nothing, 
It is wonderful. It is so wonderful to be out here and you see so many beauties on the mental field of life and along the mental highways to your destination. It is such great satisfaction you have no desire to turn to the right nor to the left. It is wonderful. Now aren't you glad? It makes you look new. Miss Blank, she looks like a different angel. The following was addressed particularly to one who always wants to travel in the fastest car and is always urging the chauffeurs to speed and be ahead. There are germs of everything that is low on cards and dice, on the gifts or the habits of playing some games, dice and cards mainly. They are games that are always performed or brought into action in the brawl hall. Golf and other games, you do not always have them in the bad houses, but all brothels have cards and dice and such things as that. For this cause, cards and dice and such as that, they are contagious with the germs of immorality and the state of perdition and everything that is low. For it is by all means low-class wicked men, what would be termed as mean people, that play these games, wherein there are other games they do not use altogether particularly. But those cards and dice are altogether in the brothel anyway, and in every expression of the underworld, cards and dice, they are in there. Drugs and such as that are always in the brothel. They are found among the people of the underworld. For this cause, it is not that the thing itself will so much affect you, but the germs that these habits carry with them. And even modest games in which there is only sociality so often, as golf and lawn tennis and croquet and even checkers and dominoes, and Laney straight, and all of those little games which may not have any germ particularly on them from the underworld altogether, but there is a germ of competition or opposition, and that works one against another. Any kind of game or race or anything that tends to work against another, it is not the expression of heaven. Harmony is heaven. Union is strength. Division is strife. So it is just for that cause we have a new croquet set. I don't bear record of having played it more than once or twice. It has been here about two years. There was, several years back, a croquet set here. Then I bought another one, and we played croquet. But it was always a strife. Where is that blessedness I knew? Where is that spirit of fellowship? Where is that spiritual communion of the Holy Spirit and of love when they are playing, when you feel strifeful at God Almighty? Where there is harmony, there is heaven. Where there is union, there is strength. And where there is division, there is strife. And where there is strife, there is weakness. That is why I don't approve of games or anything that tends to be opposed to your fellow brother or sister, they that you should be in harmony with. That is why I don't want everybody to go in the cars with me, because I don't want to argue. If I am the DVL, I want to be in harmony. If I were Gerald Chapman, I would want all to agree with me and be in harmony. Then we could go into a bank and get the money and get away and not get shocked. Wheresoever you are, if you are all in perfect harmony, no division, no strife, nothing to separate you from the other one, if you follow the leader in the bottomless pit of Hades, you would come out unscorched. For where there is union, 
there is strength. But such mortal mind, it reflects. If it doesn't upon me, it reflects. Where there is division, there is strife. Naturally, the Lincoln could outrun all other cars. It is one of the newest I have, and it is a powerful car. It is the second heaviest American car, weighing more than two and a half tons, weighs nearly half a ton more than the Cadillac. The Cadillac is a $5,000 car. The Lincoln is more powerful than that. But whether it would be or not, if the power is there, it would be in the motor. It wouldn't be in you. It wouldn't say that you would be any more heavenly. It would be no more like God. Mr. Lamb usually comes behind all of us. He always waits for everybody. He manifests the Lamb-like spirit and is more like God. Then mortal mind would take a stand against me even if you say it from a mortal standpoint of view. Say you know God, and then, just as the mortal minds out there have done for thirty years or more, say, I will get me a husband, or I will get me a wife, and then I will stand against Father as trying to prove you have more power than God. That is the thought of it, than the one that you say is God and all of the power would be in the cars and all like that, and the physical activities. And where do all of those powers come from? The powers of expression. And through by that same spirit, there have been many dollars spent that I personally have spent on account of that same spirit that exists, strife. Then someone, some mortal mind, ought to be the one to suffer for it. And as a rule, the one that radiates such as that is the one that does not produce anything for themselves. The very one that will radiate unnecessary suffering and unnecessary expenditures and such as that is the very one that does not produce anything to protect themselves, but looks to me for all protection and all help, etc., for I heard some of the angels say, It matters not whatsoever car I be in. If I am walking, they would not want to go ahead of me. If they want to get ahead of me, they don't want to get ahead of me because it is destruction for you. Yes, it is not me as a person particularly, but the personal is but the outer expression of the condition of the mind within. It is wonderful. So if you want to see me put down or put behind or anything like that, why that is wanting to see the spirit which I am put behind. Anything that hasn't got any head, why then what account is that? And if it has a head, and you get a head, or cut the head off, or put the head down, why then, the tail may die. When you kill a snake, when you bruise the snake's head, if you don't kill him, he will live. So that is something to consider. So much natural money spent unnecessarily on account of such as that. Then, as I say, let a person deny himself, as I said, of every preconceived idea. Well, you know that was the idea that you were born with. You wanted to be seen and heard of men. You wanted to be ahead. You wanted to be louder in appearance, in words, deeds, and actions. You wanted to be the center of attraction. That is the makeup. Then, as long as you have it, you cannot be in fellowship with me. And just as some say about Mr. Goodman, saying he is redeemed. I don't say he is not, but some do not think Mr. Goodman is redeemed. The first point of view is the omnipresent spirit, 
the omnipresent God, and you all get your blessings from the personal God. That is what you say. Some of you want to advocate that and direct everybody's thoughts out in the invisible wind somewhere. And yet you want to come to me for your visible sustenance, for your visible support, for the thing you visibly need. Then you want to direct somebody to the invisible wind. Then let the invisible wind give you clothing and food and shelter. Then if you are just, you would direct your thoughts to the invisible wind for whatsoever you want, for a house to live in, for water to drink, for clothes and shoes to wear. That self-exalted spirit, that self-bewildered mind has caused thousands of bodies to be in the grave today. But meek and lowly is the way, and self-denial is the light that will lead you your lamp. Let me know that you are God. But as soon as you find out that you are God, why then I will cancel what I know about it. I speak so much about Mr. Joseph and Mr. Lamb, and then as soon as they know that they are greater in expression and as truth and in life and in love than me, why then I will detach myself and go on about my business. They don't need me, even. You heard me say a little while ago about Mr. Lamb and how he expressed the Lamb-like spirit more than any of us. Then it is all right and is beautiful, and he is a hatched-out chicken and doesn't need the shell anymore. Now, after you have developed the perfect Godhead, you don't need me, the old shell you were hatched out of. The chicken doesn't need the mother hen after it gets out and God gives its feathers like the mother hen. So that is the thought, dear one. Now, just think about it. There are those that have been following me from years back. As I speak, I speak so much of little mother because you all knew and have heard me speak so much about little mother, the body that was called little mother in the great translation and the great expression and the great manifestation of God in a body. I recognize God in that little body as more than I did in this body and many others. Would rather hear it would rather hear it sing. It is wonderful. There is another body called Yaywood, and another body called White once, and that body rather reminded me of the one that spoke over in Jersey the other day. White's preaching rather reminded me of that. The body called White. I saw go up in the spirit. I do not mean go up as the other one did, but it went up in the spirit, and the one called Yaywood, and Gideon is about the only one left. It is wonderful. So many have lost their body. It is wonderful. So many have lost their body. I am not trying to frighten you all from the shores of your eternal self, but I am trying to show you the destruction of self and what will become of you when you begin to disrecognize the name that is high over all. Not me as a person. Don't think about me as a person, but think about the name for righteousness' sake and for your own consideration that I will deny myself as an individual, as a person, and as a personality, it is wonderful. There are many things I could say. There is the fatherhood of God expressed in mortality or mortal likeness. There is the sonship degree of God expressed in mortality or mortal likeness. When you detach yourself from the sonship degree of God in manifestation, you detach yourself from the way the truth, and the light. 
When you detach yourself from the fathership degree of God expressed in the likeness of mortality, you detach yourselves from that which you have said, and you have put that behind you, and you are lost. For there is no destination in your ascension if you have put God behind you. There is nowhere to go. But the sonship degree of spirit impersonality or mortal likeness declares that the fathership degree is greater than the sonship degree of expression. And he declared that I of my own self can do nothing. I will leave the personality out. He doeth the work. For your good, I express these things, these points of view, that you may walk worthy of the vocation wherein you are called, that you may be purified, made white, and tried. As I say, there are those that have transcended gravitation and then have looked back to the begging grounds of the world and have returned to the ground from which they came. So many have been caught up in the spirit. Then I say that you must stay self-denied, that you will not detract from your resolve or deviate from the way of the guidance and the leading of the spirit that is in the Christ. For there are many that have tasted of glory and as I say, and as the song says, Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine! It said that you were the heir of salvation, and said that you were purchased of God, that you were born of his spirit and washed in his blood. But why deviate and why detract from the life-giving stream that is flowing so free from me? Many have deviated and turned back to those fancies, tendencies, inclinations, and pleasures, and therefore have fallen short of the glory that was once revealed to them. It is wonderful. Walk worthy of your vocation in which you are called. Watch that you enter not into temptation. Keep your eye on Christ as being called in the religious world, the bright, and morning star, that you will have something to guide you on the ocean of time. Though your compass be broken, there will be a guide there to lead you to your mark of your high calling in God. I say that because you can be so sweet in the spirit when you are fully detached from self and absent from the body and present with the Lord. But when you are attached to self and absent from the Lord and present with the body, it is misery and woe and sorrow wherever you go. Many are so often absent from the manifestation, the expression of the inspiration of the Lord, and are present with their body. They have holden on to their body, and they have fallen short of the glory. Attachment to the body is detachment from the glory. Deny yourself, your body, your personality, your individuality, yourself entirely, and you will express the Christ in reality. Your heart says it is true. Detach yourself from the body and your personality, and you are attached to and shall have contacted the spirit and spirituality, and you are one with the Lord. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. So many blessings, I think I had better stop. If I would just personally appear over in Rush Memorial and let them know I would be there, it would be full within half an hour. They would be glad to stay all night. But it is wonderful. That is what is so wonderful. Now I am glad that you feel that way if you do as you say. If you get that little word, it is just a little word. I said, I am glad if you do as you say. Until one becomes to be absolutely impersonal and expresses the impersonal life personally, 
And even then, the arms of flesh will fail you, and you dare not trust your own. I often think of how you all delight in me and my presence, and how marvelous it is. And then, in expressions, in actions, in deeds, you prove, if I would hang my hope up in you, you would be a failure, and you would cause the whole kingdom to go down. If I would hang my hope up in you, your personal or so-called impersonal life. That is why I say that nothing else than the impersonal can be recognized, for it will fail you. God is the only thing that is trustworthy. It is good when you can radiate God through each and everything. It is good when you can x-rayedly behold God through each and everything. And it is more glorious to be the very expression itself manifested in the flesh, substantiated, unshaken, unmovable, and confirmed in all of its expressions of good. I am glad for your sakes that our mental and spiritual brother Lazarus did die, that you might see and realize that your mental hope should be built on nothing else than Christ, undefiled, incorruptible, and infinite, and his righteousness. If I build my hope on you, though you may shine and though you may be caught up in the spirit or expressions or demonstrations and demonstrate the highest vibrations and inspirations and interpretations of truth that could be uttered by the voice or words, I can say that it is for me to know that the arms of flesh will fail and put no confidence in mortality not confining nor binding myself in thoughts, words, deeds, or actions, knowing that all my help comes from my own unadulterated spirit within, my own unadulterated spirit that with or without a body, ex really I behold my spirit that will stand until rolling ages shall cease to move. It is wonderful. So it is wonderful. But when you hear and see the testimonies of you at times, how it is nothing but me in words, deeds, and in actions, I am all you claim and all you need, you say. And when you vary and deviate so, and vary from that and prove that my presence is obnoxious to you after declaring that it is nothing but the body, I suffer such things to be so that you and others will not detract from the ideal and make an idol out of anyone. I don't care if they have wings to fly, for without me ye can do nothing. And that is why mankind fails for I say, thou shalt not make unto thyself any graven image. I don't care how much like God they are. I don't care how much like God we may say we are. Thou shalt not make unto thyself any graven image. I don't care if it is like God in the heavenly state of consciousness. I don't care if it is more like God than God himself could be or is, thou shalt not make unto thyself any graven image, for that image will fail. So set your heart on the things above, and not on the things of the earth. Mr. Michael the other night explained it in trying to contribute honor to me as he termed it to be. He claimed that I am the impersonal life made personal. And when he saw me, he saw the impersonal life. Then if there is the impersonal life, that is only a pattern or shape or form to be visualized. That impersonal life that is incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in God for you. It is wonderful. By seeing and advocating that impersonal life, the life that is incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, 
then that is just according to your faith. But when you know in yourself, when you believe in yourself, when your faith in something is in a perfect state of expression, when you are visualizing any imperfection, you tend to materialize imperfection. Therefore, you should not visualize any imperfection, nor sow your thoughts or ideas in the field of imperfection or in the ground of imperfection, for it will produce the fruit of the same. While sitting, thinking about the glorious privilege and the blessedness it is to have a body to express yourself in, that is one of the most precious and hidden truths known as a mystery. And you will all be called eventually, as they have said of me, the mystery man. Not because I am in some way different than you are or should be, but I am now in the conscious realization and live herein of the materialization or the materializing of all things. If I did not bring to my conscious conviction that that which I am could be materialized as well as that which the Spirit or Word or God is, I could not bring forth the Christ to fruition in my life. Where thousands of people have made such a mistake, they have separated their body from the Spirit and have brought their bodies Practice in condemnation, and what God has joined together, they have mentally and spiritually separated. And it is written, that which God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Unthoughtfully and unconsciously, the average person, and especially those of you that have come through by the way of the teachings of truth, known as truth, it was essential for you, apparently, to detach yourselves, your thoughts, your mind, your mentality from the mortal version of your human mind to free yourselves of materialism or matter. But yet you held on to that, not discerning that this same Jesus, or in other words, first I will say that your brother shall rise again. When Lazarus went into that which was known as a spirit world, his body was as though it was dead, and his body would have seen corruption there and then had it not been for the Christ. The Christ consciousness knew that that which would pass away must return, or that of you which has passed on as passed away and as being not must come 100% alive. And for this cause, he said, thy brother shall rise again. It is wonderful, dear ones, to realize that that which is in the invisible or spiritual realm, these expressions are brought into outer or material manifestation and actually made concrete. Everything as well as was in the beginning with the truth of God when the earth was void and was without form, you are void or useless if you are without form. But it is essential for you to have a form, for God formed man out of the dust of the earth. It was essential to have a form to express himself or manifest himself, that every manifestation of God might see the manifestation of God and actually see and know their identity. For this cause, God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and God made man in his own image and likeness, created he male and female. If God was not manifested somewhere and somehow, his word would not be true. In his likeness and image created he male and female. In his likeness, and it is wonderful to know that, 
And that is the way we know and can see the identical Christ by coming to the conscious realization of the materialization of God, realizing that that which was in the spirit world, or invisible as it may be termed, has been materialized, for it was without form in the beginning. Truly might have Isaiah said, He has no form nor comeliness, but when thou shalt see him, there shall be no beauty beside him, it was essential for something to come forth in your consciousness, and from that offspring of your mind is put forth the very likeness of yourself, which is God in expression, your so-called sons and daughters. But whose sons and daughters are they, and whose sons and daughters are you? None less than God, and nothing less than Christ, and nothing more than God. God condescended to put on a body in the likeness of you before you were brought into expression and materialized himself in the likeness and from that idea formed you in the likeness of himself that was called your father. But God was your father. God was your mother. There has never been anything else but God anyway. It is wonderful. God expressing himself and bringing forth himself in many appearances and appearing unto the different appearances as it pleased him, to appease the mortal concept of that individual or personal mind as being called mortal mind, until the Christ shall have been developed or unfolded in that individual, and he shall have thrown off that mortal version and put on the immortal concept of things. Then in you Christ will rise and reign King of kings and Lord of lords. It is a glorious privilege to know the truth and free yourselves from all of the infirmities of the human mind, which is, when brought into manifestation, called sickness and death. The infirmities of the mortal version of the human mind will express itself in that which is called affliction, sickness, or diseases, poverty, lacks and wants, and will manifest itself in your physical structure. That is the mortal concept of the mortal version of your mind. That is what it is. That is all so-called sickness, so-called affliction, Error and misunderstanding is. That is what it is. It is just that mortal version of the human mind. And when you shall have put off mortal, the mortal version of the human mind, and shall have put on immortality, you will know, as well as I, that the material expression is but the conscious realization of your real self. When it is perfect, you will manifestly answer and verify the request of Jesus, the great love master. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Spirit or wind is perfect, with or without a body. But the manifestation of yourselves as individuals, as a person, has been manifesting imperfectly to you. Coming to this conscious realization, you will develop that spirit or state of consciousness in your state of conscious perfection, and you will realize that that impersonal life, or in other words, that spirit and spiritual life that you heretofore thought you were a part of, you will find out that you are the thing itself and not another then you will not have to look to the right nor to the left. You will not have to look up nor down. But you will come to that conscious realization that things that you thought, things that you thought were merely spiritual and immaterial, you will realize that they are material and that it is made manifest, the flesh, the Christ, 
the Son of God. When you realize that, you will take your body with you. You heretofore have been leaving your body by leaving the body of Christ in the tomb. You have left your bodies there and have subjugated your bodies to corruption and all of the mortal infirmities and the mortal versions of the infirmities and corruptions of the world. But when you shall have lifted your mind to God and realize as he does the truth concerning yourself and all others, you will know that you have nowhere to go saving going back to God from whence you came. You will realize that you did not come from the dust as man supposed, you are in reality the child of God. The very flesh, the bones, and the sinews. It is wonderful to realize that you are not a child of God only according to the spirit, but you are a child of God according to the flesh. If there be any flesh, or in other words, that which is known as flesh. Your very bodies are the temples of God, and your very bodies are the children of God. Then you will take your bodies along with you, and through the body you will manifest the Christ and bring him into the conscious realization of his presence with mankind. And verify with your fulfilling that of which John spoke. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And I, John, saw the holy city and the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. John did not stop there in that view, at that place, and with that view only. He said he saw that the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall be with them and God himself. He did not say his son or the spirit of his son, but God himself shall be with them and shall be their God, and they shall be his people. It is wonderful. So it is a glorious privilege, dear ones, to get away from that mortal version of your preconceived ideas and opinions and bring your bodies along with you. For this cause many are sickly among you, and some sleep, not discerning the body of Christ. They have detached themselves from the body of Christ, and consciously or unconsciously they have become antichristly inclined. Until that is brought into materialization, and consciously we recognize the antichrist. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. But every spirit that denies that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is the spirit of Antichrist. Unconsciously, so often you have become caught up in that thought, but I recall so often, retrace my thought, that there was once nearly 1900 years ago one was supposedly crucified, one was supposedly resurrected to the Christian world, that one supposedly ascended and vanished out of their sight. But there must needs be a time, mentally and spiritually, that these things are being fulfilled. The Christ as a person must vanish out of someone's sight, and so it did vanish out of your sight. The Christ as a person it was essential for him to vanish out of your sight so that you would lose the mortal concept of him, so that when he returned in your consciousness, you would no longer have the mortal concept, but would have the spiritual concept and would be brought into the conscious realization of the materialization of God, the materialized God. It was essential for you to lose sight the first grip that you had on him mentally and spiritually from that mortal concept, that you might make that mental and spiritual contact. That is why I continue to say, make your mental and spiritual contact, 
and you will be blessed of the Lord. I can see you. I can go with you. I can follow you. I can even hear you with the right concept and recognition of God. But without the right concept and recognition of God, an idol I shall have made unto myself that is corruptible and that shall fade away. It is wonderful. And with the right concept and recognition of truth, I can see you as you are, and I can recognize your presence, and I can always accept of your presence as you are, with the right concept or recognition of the truth. But without it, I would detract from the truth and from the leading of the Spirit and the truth. But I do see you just as you are. Hence, Christ in the person of Jesus, from a personal standpoint of view, ascended apparently and vanished out of the sight of those that stood by, looking at him from a material or mortal standpoint of view. It was essential for that thought to lose sight of him mentally and spiritually from that standpoint of view. It is wonderful. Then those men that stood by and saw them gazing up into the heavens, looking for that personal body called Jesus, and being somewhat dismayed, I heard them say, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the sky? That same Jesus, as you saw him go, in like manner shall he come again. It was but the outward expression of the condition of the mind within. The Christ has gone away from you from that mortal standpoint of view that he may come back to you with the spiritual concept that was hidden in the mysteries of God and verify that of which the apostles spoke to the Colossians. Colossians 1, 27 To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Among all the Gentiles, not some of them, Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So you can see the great significance of the Christ's return. It was essential for Christ to return to your conscious realization as he passed out of your imagination and vanished out of your mental sight. And you could see him from a personal standpoint of view and from a material standpoint of view no more. It was essential that it must needs have been so, that you would lose your mortal view and when you would see him again as he is, you would be like him. When he was going out of your mortal version, you were not like him then. Mentally, in your consciousness, you did not see yourself like him. You thought he was in some way different from you. But it was essential that he should go away so that you might get the spiritual concept of him as the comforter that that concept of him might come, that my father's concept of him, that my father's concept, that I and my father will come and make our abode with you, he said. It was essential for him to go away so that that concept would go away from you so that you would receive and conceive the spiritual concept of God that you might be able to see him as he is when he would appear in your consciousness again, that you might be like him. For it did not appear what you should be, but you knew within yourselves that there was a perfect day coming. There was a day of perfection coming for you, for you would see him as he is, and seeing, you would believe, and believing, 
you would receive. For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. It is wonderful. I thank you, Father, 